All right, here's a quickie for you. I'm gonna show you how to adjust a uh, PSI gauge. So this one right here is the one we're gonna use as the baseline because I know this one is accurate. If we check the pressure in this tire, it's right on 40 pounds because I just put 40 pounds in it. Now if we check this Vondor that I bought and then immediately proceed to drop on the ground like the third time I used it, you can see that it reads just a hair over 40 pounds. And that's because I dropped that, bent the uh, pressure element inside of it, the, the copper bladder, and uh, then had to go in there and do what I'm about to show you in order to fix it. And then we have this here slime gauge, which says it's uh, a crisp 37 and a half, which uh, we know is uh, not correct. So we need to tweak that slightly so that it reads higher. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. All right, so fixing one of these tire pressure gauges is actually pretty easy, and this concept applies to, you know, all pneumatic pressure gauges. Um, I don't know if it applies to hydraulic pressure gauges, uh, but it definitely applies to pneumatic, or at least stuff that operates in, you know, like the, the sub 200 PSI range. So in order to fix it, you're gonna need an appropriately sized screwdriver to take your back plate off. That's usually like a uh, P2 Phillips. But you can't see it on there because of the cover. And really that's it. You just, and then you also need another screwdriver to pop this front cover off. And uh, then you need a pair of needle nose pliers or a small flat blade screwdriver that you can use to pry on the uh, pneumatic pressure bladder in order to uh, recalibrate it. And uh, messing with the pressure bladder, um, if, if, you're, if this is a really precision tool, buy another one. Uh, this is just to get it coarsely recalibrated to where you need it. For something like a tire pressure gauge, that's fine. We can recalibrate it to a nominal PSI where we need it to be relatively accurate. And uh, then forget about it. But, you know, if you're using this, say, in an, an air compressor to regulate um, some... Well, I guess this is just this is just a visual gauge. So really, if, you, if you're using it in some situation where you need to know the exact PSI, maybe don't do this. Maybe buy another gauge. Um... But if you just need this to be accurate at a specific PSI, you know, within 1 or 2%, this is pretty good. Because if you if you tamper with that pressure bladder, you can work hard in the material, change its elasticity, um, you can put a dent in it, change its volume, and that'll mess up its calibration at other pressures. But since we're calibrating at it at a very specific PSI, in this case 40, um, where we want the gauge to be relatively accurate, it's not going to make a difference. So it'll you'll hook it up, and it'll tell you it's... 40 psi and if it's not 40 psi then you know you need to add pressure and that's the only real range you need it to uh, actually be accurate so i'm going to get in here pull this back cover off pop this front cover off expose the pressure bladder and show you how to adjust that all right so first step is you got to pop the top cover off and that's usually is most easily done with just a flat blade screwdriver um, if you're lucky that there's not this little lip here in the uh, main body of the housing and you can just sort of stick the screwdriver under there and pry it off like that on the that's how that is on the condor you see there's you know the main body has a cutout in the slime one it's you know a square hole so not a little bit trickier you got to jam the screwdriver in between this brass block and the housing and then twist up and just pry it all the way around and uh, then you just sort of take the screwdriver and then just sort of slide it into it with some force all the way around and just knock it off. And once you get it free enough, you can usually grab it, twist it, pull it off. Then you just take these screws off the back and uh, that'll allow you to uh, slide this whole guy out through the uh, housing, which uh, may be a little bit tricky on this job right here, but I'll see if I can do it. Okay, so this slime gauge is a little bit of a special case because this outer body um, won't, I can't get that off without either cutting this part of the body or disconnecting, you know, this stem off of the housing down there. And uh, that's a lot of work and I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to tweak it with it like this, but that doesn't make for a very good visual. So I took about the part, this one from the air compressor, and here you see the copper pneumatic pressure bladder. And what happens is you hook air up to this, and that causes this bladder to expand, which causes it to curl outward like that. And when it curls outward, the gauge moves. 
So as you can see, this one's borked and it's reading 40 PSI when there's nothing in it. So what we need to do is we either need to bend one of two things. This bladder right here or this little arm right here. If we bend this arm, that'll change this. If we bend the arm down, that'll affect the gauge. And if we bend the bladder up, or I guess the bladder in, that will affect the gauge. So the simplest thing to do is to bend the bladder. But the thing that is probably most likely not to accidentally break your gauge is to just bend this little arm. And it's only if you need to bend it just a little bit like that. I think I'm going to try bending the gauge. And, you know, if you just don't care like I do, you can just go, uh, and just try and bend it with your thumb like that. And you see, that did it pretty good. But, ooh, you're playing with fire because you could do something like that and just fuck everything up. So yeah, be careful. All right, so I refixed this one. Um, it's just got so much going on with it because, you know, it's bent to hell. I had a misalignment issue with this guy and this guy. It's a very cheap gauge. So instead of using a, you know, riveted linkage like this guy does, it's literally just got like a hog ring connecting the two. And what I did is, well, because I had this guy misaligned that way and then this whole central clockwork mechanism was bent, these two guys were misaligned like that. And then when I pushed on it, this hog ring slipped through here at an angle and moved up on here and then that messed everything up. So I tweaked everything, realigned it, put it back. And now we are about, pretty much about perfect now. You know, from what I can tell by hand without actually testing it. You know, with a pressure source. So I think that's good enough to throw back onto that stupid compressor that I don't care about. But I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing to this. And really all you're trying to do is just take this bladder and just bend it ever so slightly up. Or take that little arm right there and bend it ever so slightly down to recalibrate it where you need it to go. So I'm gonna go take this, recheck it on the car to make sure I haven't messed with it. And then I'm just gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm just going to bend that little arm right there just a tiny little bit and then recheck and then bend it, recheck, be, re, bend it, recheck, bend it, recheck until we're reading right where I want it to. And uh, I'll show you when I got that done. All right, I've been tweaking this thing with the pliers for a couple of minutes and as you can see now, we are now accurate. I mean, with all the air I've let out, it's, you know, probably 39, 38 PSI in the tire now. But as you can see, the gauge bottoms out. And it reads. <clears throat> Close enough. So, I'm going to put that back together. And uh, she is uh, now recalibrated for use with, you know, road tires. So that's what you're all riled up about. A possum on the half shell. Come here, little armadillo. Got a present for you. All right, bam, there they are back together. So I checked this one off screen uh, just with an air nozzle just pressed up against the bottom of this to my big compressor. And it's reading, you know, pretty close. It's within five PSI. It's it seems to be the same at 80 PSI, which is kind of the, the mean operating range for this gauge anyway. So that's good enough for me. At uh, 40 PSI, it's reading like five high, but I'd rather read a little bit high than a little bit low because uh, I'd rather not accidentally grenade my tank because I think it's, you know, a lot lower than it actually is. And uh, this one now is uh, perfectly accurate at um, 40 PSI. So I'm going to hook that in the truck because I was getting sick and tired of having a gauge that I didn't know whether or not it was reading high or low, but I knew it was not accurate. Hope this video helped. If it did, go down there, give it a like, uh, comment if uh, you know a better way to uh, tweak these things, whether or not you should be tweaking the bladder or that little arm or something in that clockwork mechanism. Um, but this has always worked for me uh, whenever I have a busted gauge. You know, I don't rely, you know, I don't stake my life on any of this, but you know, when you're just checking, checking tire pressure, you know, if it's a PSI or two off, that doesn't really make a difference. 
um, especially when you're only at like the 40 PSI range. I'm not talking like a, you know, 150 PSI, like 18 wheeler tire or something. I'm just talking about, you know, a regular standard passenger vehicle or a trailer tire. And, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see uh, more random jury rigged ways to fix uh, garbage, uh, go down there and smash that subscribe button. Until next time, Tom out. Well, after about two years of trying, I finally got this drain out of my dad's air compressor. And, uh, uh that's Charleston for you. Uh, I don't think he's drained this thing in about 20 years. Um, I, I think there's probably close to about a gallon or two in this fucking tank. Um, anywho, there's so much that the brass fitting was plugged and I had to actually drill a hole through the, the, uh, fitting itself so that I could stick a nail through it and then capture that on this thumb knob and then grab that thumb knob with a big pair of channel locks to break it free after I already tried, you know, everything else in the world, including trying to take, you know, the welded bra or brazed brass fitting out of the tank. Uh, and putting, you know, vice grips on the actual thing itself. But uh, that worked, and uh, so far we've got, you know, a nice, good, I don't know, 20 ounces worth of red goo coming out of there, and uh, yeah. Maybe the air compressor will work a little bit better in the future. I don't think I've ever put oil in this thing either. I don't know if Dad has. I should probably look into that. It sounds like me after burritos. I think we might be done, maybe. Oh, no. Still a little bit more. Let her all out. I feel better. It looks like me after burritos, too. Sorry for that mental image.